The Chicago Outfit has been a notorious criminal organization since the early 1900s. In the early days of power, it was run by Al Capone, one of the most infamous mafia figures of all time. In the present time, the criminal group keeps a low profile. Even the top mafia experts don't have inside information about their underworld. But there's one thing that a lot of people are curious about. Who is running the Chicago Outfit today? In the world of underground crime, everything is kept quiet. Today, the public really has no idea who is leading this outfit. However, it's believed that Salvatore Soli D. De Laurentiis has taken on the role. In today's video, we're going to explore where the Chicago Outfit stands today and how it differs from the past. We'll discuss how Soli D climbed to the top and how his influence impacts the Mafia today. Stay tuned for the whole story on this infamous crime group. The Chicago Outfit originated in 1910 as a crime group in the South Side. The group rose to power in the 1920s during the Prohibition when Al Capone and Johnny Torrio were in control. In the beginning, the group was mainly involved with alcohol distribution. They would illegally distribute liquor to unlicensed businesses. However, they didn't stop their illegal activities there. The group got involved in many other criminal activities throughout the years. This included illegal gambling rackets, prostitution, and extortion, just to name a few. Al Capone was arguably the most well-known leader in the outfit's history. The group has had several leaders throughout the decades. Sam Giancana was another notorious figure who took on the role of leadership in 1957. He fled to Mexico in 1966 to avoid imprisonment and was deposed from the position. However, he was brought back to the U.S. and shot to death in 1975. When it comes to mafia leadership, they don't operate the same as businesses in the corporate world. There is no press release or a public announcement when a new boss steps into the role. Modern crime families will keep their business as far out of the public eye as possible. You won't hear about it in the media when someone moves up the ranks. In fact, the past few bosses of the Chicago outfit have been based on public speculation. It was widely believed that John No Nose DeFranzo led the outfit from 1996 to 2018. He passed away at the age of 89 from Alzheimer's complications. After Nono's passed, the question was made public. Who's running the Chicago outfit now? This question had true crime fans around the world talking. The Mafia has a strict way of dictating leadership. They don't post a job ad or seek possible candidates from the outside. Instead, they look from within. The ideal Mafia leader will have experience and a history of loyalty within the crew. They must go through the ranks to get this position. It won't happen overnight or out of sheer luck. Every made man must do his time before he can get there. That's why all signs point to Salvatore De Laurentiis as the leader today. Now, keep in mind, this is still up for debate. Salvatore himself has denied the claims. Others connected to the outfit have denied it as well, claiming that the 85-year-old man is too old to be running a mob. But they could just be saying this to keep the attention away from their criminal activities. Very little is known about Salvatore De Laurentiis' life before he joined the Chicago outfit. He was born in 1939, and it's believed that he was inducted into the outfit in the late 1980s and put in charge of Lake Country, Illinois. In the early 1990s, Salvatore De Laurentiis and four other Mafia members went to trial for the Good Ship Lollipop case. This was a very complex investigation that began in 1974 and took 16 years to complete. Throughout the investigation, authorities focused on specific activities of the crime organization. This included extortion, tax cheating, illegal gambling, bribery, and two suburban murders. Solly D and the other defendants were sentenced to prison, and he wasn't released until 2007. It's believed that Solly D got out of prison earlier than he should have. Allegedly, a mistake was made, resulting in a clean sweep of guilty verdicts. The judge had to reconvene the jury after discovering the error. Initially, the verdicts would have put the mobster behind bars for several decades, but this mistake was Solly D's lucky break. When he was released from prison, his exact role with the Chicago outfit was unclear to the public. There was speculation that he was a co-capo of the Cicero crew. Now, whether he took on the role of outfit boss is still a mystery to the public. When asked up front about it, Solly D was quick to deny this claim. According to him, the theory of being a mob boss couldn't be true because the FBI monitors his activities. If he was involved with mafia activities in even the slightest, they would know about it. Or at least he claims. We say this because Salvatore De Laurentiis does have a history of denying his Mafia interactions. He appeared in a 1993 interview where he denied any Mafia activity through his connections with the outfit. Instead, he made claims that they were involved in a painting business. 
The outfit is like a group that comes in here to paint the walls. It's the painting outfit. During that same interview, he also stated that he worked as a bricklayer and did casual gambling. He tried to play it off like he was just a part-time gambler and had no mafia association. But the good ship lollipop case proved otherwise. After speculation broke out that Salvatore was now the Chicago outfit's boss, he started making claims that the only business he was involved in was the carpet cleaning business. Could he be back to his old tricks of denial to draw attention away from his mafia activities? Or is he really just a carpet cleaner? These days, the Chicago outfit stays out of the public eye. It's believed that Solly D is leading the crime group, but he isn't involved in day-to-day -day operations. His underboss was Jimmy Inandino, who had been captain of the Cicero crew since 2010, but Jimmy passed away in 2023. Since then, it has been speculated that Salvatore Sammy Cards Catadella has taken on the role. The current street boss is believed to be Albert Albi the Falcon Vina. Albi the Falcon is known for beating a murder charge. He climbed up through the ranks as a very powerful capo. He also replaced Joseph Lombardo after he was convicted in the Family Secrets case in 2007. Allegedly, he is the one in charge of the day-to-day -day operations. He is also second in command in case something happens to Solly D. It's also believed that high-ranking member and known criminal Joseph Joe the Builder and Riachi is the outfit's consigliere, and the acting consigliere is John Pudgy Matassa Jr. The group is also made up of several capos, soldiers, and associates. A lot of people question if the Chicago outfit is still operating today. The criminal organization is believed to be still operating. However, it's not nearly as big or powerful as it was during the Prohibition. The modern Chicago outfit is a lot smaller to begin with. There aren't nearly as many acting bosses or street crews. The crew also doesn't need as many soldiers as it used to. It's believed that the criminal group was connected to over 1,000 murders from the 1920s to the early 2000s. With today's crew, there are no murders. Things don't escalate to that level anymore. Some believe that the killings have stopped because they're bad for business, while others believe that the FBI has cracked down on the organization harder over the years. Chicago organized crime violence is nowhere near as rampant as it was decades ago. Now it's viewed as more of a business, and only insiders know exactly what's going on. Before jumping to the conclusion that the Chicago outfit has declined over the last 75 years, it's important to take a look at how society and laws have changed. Bootlegging liquor was the main source of income and power for the outfit during the Prohibition. The ban on alcohol meant that people had to buy it illegally. Today, people can buy alcohol at licensed stores and establishments. Businesses can apply for licenses to serve liquor at their establishments. It's easily accessible to the public, so nobody needs to buy it illegally. Illegal gambling operations were another big source of income for the criminal group. Gambling has also become legal and easily accessible throughout the decades. People can legally go to a casino or play casino games online. They can also find plenty of options for placing sports bets. Lottery tickets are even available at most corner stores. This eliminates the need to turn to the mafia for gambling activity. While illegal gambling has dried up over the years, it hasn't completely vanished. It's believed that the outfit still participates in juice loans. These are short-term loans provided to people who lost large sums of money gambling. With these loans also come very high interest rates. Even though violence in the mob isn't what it used to be, people still know better than to screw over an outfit member with a juice loan payment. So, what type of organizations are the Chicago Outfit involved in today? It's believed that the outfit will do what they think they can get away with. This includes activities like drug trafficking, labor corruption, criminal rackets, and prostitution. However, there is no concrete proof that the outfit is involved in these activities. Everything about the group is just speculation at this point. When comparing the Chicago outfit of the 1920s versus the 2020s, there are some significant differences. All of that stems down to how laws have changed. Everything that Al Capone and his group were infamous for doing is legal now. This goes to show that he might not have had the same level of power and influence if he had been around for today's era. Even though it may seem like the Chicago outfit isn't as feared as it used to be, the group is still a threat. It's a lot leaner than it used to be, but each member is resilient and has a lot of experience. They know how to seek out money-making opportunities and won't let the law stop them. In recent years, the Chicago outfit hasn't been involved in any major legal scandals. The last significant legal challenge was the Operation Family Secrets investigation in 2005. This investigation indicted 14 members of the outfit. Frank Calabrese Jr. betrayed his father, Frank Calabrese, an established Chicago outfit figure, by providing a testimony to authorities. His uncle Nick Calabrese also provided a testimony about his brother. 
Frank Jr. initially wrote the FBI a letter about his father in 1998, which kicked off the investigation. He believed his father was a very sick man and that by speaking to authorities, he could ensure the man remained locked up in prison for life. This investigation uncovered several criminal activities, including loan sharking, bookmaking, and 18 murders that took place between 1970 and 1986. In 2005, the authorities turned over a 43-page indictment. Two years later, the trial started. The main five defendants of the case, Frank Calabrese Sr., Joseph Lombardo, James Marcello, Anthony Doyle, and Paul Shiro, were all found guilty. Of the other nine defendants, six pled guilty. The other three, Frank Saladino, Michael Ricci, and Frank Schweiss, died before their day in court. This legal challenge affected the Chicago outfit's legacy. Frank Calabrese Sr.'s own family members turned on him and took down several other key players in the process. This operation showed the Chicago outfit that they couldn't trust anyone, even blood. It also meant that the remaining Chicago outfit members had to be more cautious with their criminal activity. While Salvatore De Laurentiis has kept his life private, he is known to be a family man. Unfortunately, his son, Salvatore De Laurentiis Jr., died in a tragic motorcycle accident in 2012. He was participating in a motorcycle run for charity with his wife Sharon when he got into the accident. He was buried in a private ceremony. After Salvatore Jr.'s passing, his wife and three children received a tremendous amount of emotional and financial support from their community. This inspired the De Laurentiis family to start the Solly's Way Foundation. With the money this foundation raises, they help by awarding scholarships to students who have lost a parent or guardian. Over the years, this foundation has made the news for hosting events to raise money. Each year, they have been able to provide scholarships to help several students. Since launching, they've provided over 70 students with scholarships, and that number grows each year. There are several ways that people can donate to this cause. They can visit the official Solly's Way website and make a donation. People can also attend a Solly's Way fundraising event to donate and learn more about the cause. This wraps up our video on who runs the Chicago outfit today. It's widely believed that Salvatore Solly D. De Laurentiis is the leader. Despite his old age, the mobster has the experience and skills to keep things in order and out of the public eye. Although Solly D is in charge of the organization, he isn't involved in the operations. Instead, his street boss, Albert Albi the Falcon Vina, manages this side of things. Today, the Chicago outfit is a lot smaller than it used to be. The group is still functioning, but there are far fewer members than in past decades. One of the main reasons for the organization's decline is that many of the activities they used to be involved in are now legal. Liquor bootlegging was their main business during the Prohibition, which brought them into a position of power. Nowadays, liquor is easily accessible, so establishments won't risk working with bootleggers. We hope you enjoyed today's video. Do you think Solly D is leading the Chicago outfit today? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to hit like, share, and subscribe to see more Mafia Mystique content.